conference here in Bucharest organized by Doing Business Romania and the co-organizer EY. I'm very pleased uh, that we will have a robust discussion this morning with a very distinguished uh, panel. There are a number of topics uh, for this opening session and we are looking at things ranging from Romanian business and economic outlook all the way uh, to the energy uh, revolution and where the energy markets are going. But in between, of course, we will talk about investment trends and where Romania is heading in terms of its competitiveness as well and setting the scene to some extent also for the second panel which will follow after us. I would like to also, on behalf of the organizers, uh, thank all the sponsors, partners, supporting organizations and media partners who have made this event possible. And uh, let me also say that this is a bilingual event. There are also translation kits in the back, and if you need translation, Romanian, English, or backwards, uh, please uh, use those kits in the back. Uh, they are provided uh, over there. Let me introduce the panel first, and then I will make a few very short remarks about Romania's place in the global economy and in the European context, and then we will turn to the panel. So on the panel we have uh, Katalin Pauna, who is the country economist for the World Bank, Bogdan Ion, who is the country managing partner of EY, Romania and Moldova, Mr. Ludwig Sobolevsky, who is the CEO of the Bucharest the Stock Exchange, on my left, uh, Mrs. Daniela Lulake, who is the CEO of Nuclear Electrica. Uh, on the far left, almost on the far left, Ion uh, Dumitru, chairman of the Fiscal Council. And uh, on the very far left, Marius Dan, investor relations director for Franklin Templeton Investments. So all of these uh, uh, panelists will be looking at the topics that I mentioned. And of course, uh, Mrs. Lulake will be the lead on the energy discussion towards the end of this panel. First, we will, of course, look at the Romanian economic, macroeconomic developments. But let me uh, first say a few words about how we see in our business practice our clients looking at Romania and, in fact, how Romania fits at the moment in some of the global trends. Just to let you know, uh, at the moment, a quick scan of the world uh, indicates that Romania is not doing badly. Uh, compared to many other markets uh, on the planet. In fact, uh, if I give you a quick tour of the developed markets, what is encouraging ultimately for Eastern Europe and Romania is that the US market is growing okay. It's doing around 2.5% growth, which for the size of the economy and accounting for more than a quarter of global GDP at market exchange rates, uh, this is a very encouraging sign for the global economy, and in fact it's helping European exporters export more to the US, and so any investments that exist for exports related businesses in Romania are of course uh, doing quite well, uh, l being linked into that European supply chain ultimately ending up in markets that are growing, uh, like the United States. So that's good news. US is growing and it probably will continue growing reasonably well and the US dollar likely to keep strengthening in the coming year or two with the normalization of monetary policy by the Federal Reserve at some stage. The, there is some solid, uh, finally, after many years, some solid encouraging news related to the Eurozone uh, economies as well. Hopefully, there will be a real impact uh, from the upcoming quantitative easing program that the European Central Bank uh, will start in March. The idea behind this, and already we have seen some impact from this, which ultimately does have a benefit for the Romanian economy. When Eurozone does well, so do most of the Central European markets, and that's good news. So the impact has already been positive to some extent. Because of the announcement of the quantitative easing program in Europe, the value of the euro has gone down relative to quite a few currencies, particularly the US dollar. And that's, in the end, good news for European exporters who will be hopefully going into the compiled cash reserves, which they have been diligently 
putting together over the last few years and they hopefully will start spending more, which is good news then for the next few years. So that one impact has been positive, cheaper euro, ultimately benefiting the entire European context. The other benefit already is that imports are now more expensive in the eurozone, which means the threat of deflation, prices falling, has already also been to some extent arrested, hopefully, and uh, we are now hoping that the eurozone will not end in an endless deflationary downward trajectory in a way, which again is good news and we don't want to have a deflation. Nobody wants a deflation when prices are falling and if it gets entrenched, nobody is going to shops anymore and buying anything. And as we all know, the real value of debt goes up. So that's good news that we are now hopefully fighting uh, the deflationary threat in Europe, ultimately benefiting all European markets, and that's good news. And in the end, of course, the access to finance for countries with the ECB program should get cheaper, which ultimately should benefit uh, countries like Romania when seeking to borrow more internationally as a country, but also ultimately the cost of capital for corporates should also be benefiting from all of this. Because this quantitative easing program in Europe is uh, partly uh, basically buying bonds in the <coughs> secondary market from financial institutions. The idea is that when they sell their bonds to the ECB uh, that, or actually their national central banks, in the end, uh, hopefully, the new cash which they get, they will be channeling into more lending, which, by the way, has been very dormant and difficult in the Eurozone, and lending has not been growing, as you know, and we know that is a, also a negative trend in Romania, which I will ask our panel to comment on why lending in real terms keeps uh, shrinking in Romania. But this is, by the way, a Europe-wide trend, and hopefully this change at the ECB level will also have a positive impact, plus, of course, in Romania itself, with expected further cuts in interest rates, hopefully we will see a revival of lending here, just as we're expecting a little bit of pickup in lending in the Eurozone economies uh, as well. So there is some silver lining, a little bit of hope for the Eurozone economy genuinely starting to pick up, and hopefully we will see growth uh, in 2015, which will be around 1%, hopefully a little bit more than that, which will be encouraging and ultimately good news for anybody uh, doing business in Romania, any exporters from Romania, and so forth. The other economy, which is an important one globally, uh, Japan, uh, it's about almost 9% of global GDP, it's a significant one. It's also picking up now, but mostly because of exports, but it's again good news that after their big quantitative easing program, there's a bit of growth there. So in a way, uh, the global uh, picture in the developed markets is looking not bad. Uh, it's actually a little bit more encouraging than we have seen over the last few years, as you know, which have all been very challenging for business and for economic growth. In emerging markets, it's Asia actually leading the way. We are seeing still very solid expansion growth rates of around 6%, which we all remember Eastern Europe enjoyed back in 2006 and 2007. And so Asia continues to power along very well. Most of our clients, and uh, we work with more than 400 corporations doing business uh, in emerging markets at the moment, I can tell you most of them are still prioritizing Asia, emerging Asia, for their business development investments, foreign direct investments, and so on. So in a way, competition for Romania is not only uh, with Hungary or Slovakia or Poland in terms of attracting foreign investment or moving up the competitiveness rankings, but you have to beat just about everybody in the world in the end and set the benchmark very high. And of course, Asia is powering along and it's very difficult to compete against some of those uh, markets which are growing very strongly, and even India is now over 7% growth, and Indonesia at 6 and Vietnam at almost 7 These are very fast-growing markets. Uh, the, the news is also still good in Middle East and Africa. Markets are doing solidly there, growing 4 or 5% a year, and corporations very attracted to that part of the world. Latin America is slow, and Eastern Europe is slow uh, overall uh, in terms of economic growth. Now, Eastern Europe, uh, and I will come to Romania in a second, but just to give you the regional context here, which is uh, still overall relatively difficult. 
we are dealing with many heads of East European operations uh, within our client companies. And uh, for the last six years, I have been calling them CEOs, the chief explanation officers, uh, people who have been trying to explain to their global boards why their results in Eastern Europe now for six years are underperforming Asia, underperforming Middle East, underperforming Africa, and even uh, Latin America, despite all the troubles in Brazil and a few other markets. And uh, that has now been for quite some time. And this is a big change between, because between 1998 and 2008, Central and Eastern Europe was the fastest growing part of the planet Earth, and it was the biggest recipient per capita of foreign direct investment flows. And for our clients, everybody was largely growing in very solid double digits. This has not been the case in the last six years. We had a big meeting uh, with our corporate clients in Vienna in December, I can tell you more than 90% of our corporate clients, and they're all very large multinationals, actually missed their budgets in 2014. And that's uh, the worst result we have seen in six years, and largely this is uh, because mainly the problems are in Russia and Ukraine. The volume uh, that everybody was budgeting for simply didn't come in. The numbers are devastatingly bad, particularly in Ukraine, and getting much worse in Russia. So for many regional presidents of large companies, Eastern Europe was a headache last year, and the growth they were able to generate in Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, a little bit in Bulgaria, a little bit in Slovenia, or a little bit in the Baltic states, has not been able to compensate for revenue shortfalls that exist further east. And of course, also the impact of the devaluation in Kazakhstan hit many companies, and that was a sizable one overnight. And there will be another one, by the way, uh, coming up sometime in 2015. So corporate expectations for this year, 2015, are, have changed significantly as well. Companies have downgraded their overall CEE growth expectations, but they have increased the expectations for the markets like Romania. Uh, so country managers in this room running multinational corporations this year will be getting more phone calls from their heads of EMEA or global directors saying, give me more from Romania because we are bleeding in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the same fate uh, will also be hitting heads of Poland, heads of Czech, heads of Slovakia, heads of Hungary. I think these five markets in Central and Eastern Europe are actually the biggest hopes for corporations that they will deliver more growth than usual this year. So any of you who are running uh, country operations in Romania expect more pressure uh, to rise on you and managing expectations I think will be one of the most important things uh, you will have to do with your regional presidents uh, during this year. And uh, from that perspective, it will not be that much fun. Uh, as we all know, managing expectations is always a difficult exercise. To close uh, my opening statements, let me just give you some latest figures. We are actually surveying multinational corporations, and this is the survey from December, so about six, seven weeks old. <coughs> and uh, we are asking the largest corporations in the world to tell us how business is going for them in Eastern Europe and what they expect for 2015. And it's a larger survey of, this, of its kind uh, when it looks at the regional uh, scope for Central East European markets. I can tell you the following. So, for 2014, 74% of multinational companies had revenue growth in Romania. Only 5% declined in terms of revenues, and 21% were flat. This, by the way, was the fifth best result in Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, that's actually very good news, because Romania has been moving up this regional rankings in terms of revenue growth for multinational companies. And uh, I cannot remember the last time Romania was ranked at number five, very high. And this is looking at 23 markets altogether. We do exclude some small countries like Kyrgyzstan and so forth. They are not included in this. 79% of companies uh, had profit growth in Romania last year. Only 6% declined and 15% were flat which, interestingly enough, uh, was the second best result in CE after Turkey. And uh, also an all-time high in terms of regional rankings for Romania. 
Now, needless to say, this is attracting corporate attention, and that's why that's maybe another reason why so many of you will get even more phone calls from your guys to say, can you squeeze a bit more from the Romanian business because we are bleeding in Russia and Ukraine? To give it you also the results by sector, consumer <coughs> goods companies, 83% had revenue growth last year, which was the second best result in Central Eastern Europe after Turkey as well. It was mostly a mix of single digit growth and almost all companies had profit growth last year. In terms of food and beverages, around 60% of companies had uh, top line growth, which was among the worst, by the way, in Central Eastern Europe, interestingly enough, but over 70% had profit growth. For industrial B2B companies, who are selling into these export supply chains and so forth. 77% of companies had revenue growth, which was number eight ranking for Eastern Europe. And it was very similar, by the way, for profit growth. For pharmaceuticals and healthcare sector, putting together pharma companies, medical devices, everybody in, under one umbrella, 79% of companies had revenue growth in Romania last year, which was the fifth best result in Eastern Europe. And uh, just under 65% of companies had profit growth. And on the IT side, about two-thirds of companies, roughly speaking, enjoyed revenue growth and profit growth as well. Now, what's interesting is the expectations for 2015 are even better. Over 80% of companies expect top-line growth, uh, but only 18% of companies expect to grow in double digits. So mostly it's single-digit growth, which, by the way, is exactly the case in other markets in Central Europe. But over 90%, 93% of companies expect profit growth, which is, interestingly, the best in Central and Eastern Europe. But only 12% of companies expect double-digit profit growth. Mostly expectations are in lower single digits, in fact. For our clients, uh, large multinational companies, Romania is now number six priority market for new business development investments in Central Eastern Europe. It is actually the fifth in terms of hiring intentions. So many companies in our group plan to hire more people in Romania in the next 12 months. However, at the same time, a negative trend is that 36% of companies see their clients and customers buying cheaper brands, downtrading, which is, by the way, the fourth worst result uh, in the whole of Central and Eastern Europe. And also 19% of companies have difficulties collecting receivables, which is the seventh worst result in Eastern Europe. <clears throat> At the same time, only 3% of companies plan to cut their staff costs or sales or marketing costs. So overall, I would say it's a mostly positive picture, which, by the way, fits well, I think, with the economic outlook, we, outlook which we will look at at the moment. But, uh, it seems we are on the good way to generate a sustainable 3, 3.5% three growth. I will ask my panel to confirm whether they agree with this or not, which is, by the way, similar to Poland and probably similar to what Hungary will achieve and better than Czech, better than Slovakia, better than Slovenia, better than Rom Croatia or Serbia, better than the Baltic states, and certainly better than almost anything you will find further east in Russia CIS uh, territory. So in a way, in terms of economic growth, Romania will almost lead the way uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. At the same time, I think everybody is very aware that uh, we are still far away from some of the high growth rates that we had prior to the global crisis. But all of this uh, looks to me quite encouraging. Now, uh, let's start with our panel. And uh, as we agreed, I would uh, first turn to Mr. Jono Dumitru, who is the chairman of the Fiscal Council, who has actually prepared a few slides for you. And uh, will show you uh, a few um, a few points related to the macroeconomic outlook and, of course, in his capacity as a chief economist of the Raiffeisen Bank Romania. Uh, please. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, I will try to, to put on the table some, uh, some graphs and some data to, to set the stage for discussions. Basically, yeah, the economic recovery started a couple of years ago in Romania already after a sharp contraction in 2009. We are experiencing now 
a growth in GDP close to 2%, slightly above 2% in real terms if we exclude agriculture, agriculture being quite volatile, I think in order to see the, the underlying trends in the economy, we should exclude agriculture from our, our calculations. So we experienced before the crisis more than 7% growth in real terms. We are now facing an environment with slightly above 2% growth in, uh, in GDP, excluding agriculture, which is still much below compared with the pre-crisis level, but compared with the other countries in the region, it's not so bad. Uh, Romania is still ranking uh, in the top of uh, CE countries in terms of uh, GDP growth, and uh, this is not bad at the European level as well. Why we are facing now a completely different environment in terms of GDP growth uh, uh, outlook, we are facing a completely different environment in terms, of G in terms of capital flows. This is the main explanation, in my view, why the, the economic outlook is completely different. Before the crisis, we had more than 15% growth, 15% of GDP, sorry, uh, capital flows coming to Romania, roughly 20 billion euros per year. We are now facing an environment with almost no capital flows. Actually, we are experiencing slight negative flows, meaning that there are some outflows in some sectors, especially in the banking sector. There is a quite an aggressive deleveraging process in the banking sector. We have a quite low level of FDI, but at the same time having outflows in the banking sector on a net basis. When we are speaking about long-term flows, we are experiencing now negative flows to Romania. I already mentioned that there is a deleveraging process in the banking sector. This is reflected in all components of lending, excluding mortgage lending. The only component of lending which is still growing is mortgage lending driven by Prima Casa, the first, first house governmental program with a state guarantee of 50%. The other components are still on a downward trend, uh, especially consumer lending, which is on a downward trend since 2008. Uh, the households are repaying their debt. The debt service is decreasing. Uh, which is a good thing, but uh, at the same time, the, the lending activity is quite weak. The macro picture is quite good compared with the other countries in, uh, in Europe, uh, especially the current account is now much more sustainable. It's close to 1% deficit, close to zero, I would say. Uh, the budget deficit is, again, quite, uh, quite low, below 2%. Uh, which is, again, very good compared with the other countries in Europe. Domestic demand recovered significantly in the last couple of quarters, especially consume, uh, consumption, which is now quite close to the trend, the medium-term trend. You can see that before the crisis we had uh, an exuberant behavior. There was a kind of a bubble, both in terms of consumption, but also in terms of investment activity. Look at the second graph. In terms of investment activity, it was a huge bubble, I would say, driven mainly by the construction sector. Unfortunately, the, the investment activity is not picking up yet. Uh, the investment activity suffered significantly, especially in the public sector. There was a big contraction in the, in the public sector in investment activity in the last two years. And in the private sector, there is not too much activity as well. We had a significant fiscal consolidation process, one of the most impressive at the European level, but we should take into account the starting point as well. At the onset of the crisis, Romania had one of the highest budget deficits in Europe. Of course, we had to adjust that deficit, and uh, the main driver of that was the cut in expenditures. Now we are stabilizing at around 2% deficit, maybe slightly below 2%. We need to, to cut further the deficit in the next years according with our commitments at the European level. Uh, the progress in terms of macroeconomic adjustment was rewarded by investors. Romania is paying now record low interest rate for public debt, and uh, the, the, the rating agency, SMP, decided to upgrade Romania to investment grade status, which is again a good thing. Romania, for instance, is paying now close to 3% interest rate for 10 year uh, treasury securities, which is uh, something unbelievable. So basically, Romania is in a very good position. Of course, there is plenty of liquidity at the global level, but Romania has a quite a 
uh, a positive image in, uh, in terms of investors, investor perception, and this is quite, uh, quite good, I would say. Inflation is clo uh, clo close to zero now. Maybe in the next couple of months we'll uh, touch a little bit the negative territory, which is, again, very new for a country like Romania, but afterwards there should be a pickup in inflation towards 1.5, maybe 2% at the end of the year. So basically there is some room for the central bank left to further cut, cut the interest rate. The labor market conditions are improving, I would say. Uh, unemployment is slightly going down. Uh, at the same time, disposable income is going up with around 5% in real terms. Uh, the, the number of employees multiplied by the, by the average wage is growing with around 5% in real terms, <clears throat> driven mainly by wage increases, but also by in the increase in uh, number of employees. Of course, we are coming from a period with minus 10, minus 15% in the previous years, but 5% growth in disposable income in real terms is quite strong. At the same time, I think the, the best news we have is the improvement in consumer confidence in the last uh, graph, driven mainly by the unemployment expectations, which are improving, and the perception of the economic situation, which is again improving. Maybe there is some correlation with the results of the presidential elections as well, uh, but I think it's more related to the interest rate environment uh, and uh, yeah, there is more appetite for, for spending at the consumer level, which should support consumption in the coming period, and this should be positive for, for the growth outlook. We are expecting to see in 2014, uh, 15, 16, a growth close to 3%, which is quite strong but still much lower compared with the pre-crisis level, but at the European level, it's quite strong to have a growth of 3%. This should be supported by, by the low interest rate environment, by the improving confidence at the consumer level, and eventually, I would say, an improving investment activity, especially in the public sector. I think we cannot go too much lower <laughs> compared with 2014. The level set in 2014 was so low in terms of public investments compared with the previous years, I think there is a very strong statistical base effect at, at least. So in a longer term perspective, I think Romania has plenty of potential to grow, but in order to take advantage of that, we need to, to go ahead with structural reforms, especially in the state-owned companies sector, which is very political sensitive, politically sensitive, I would say, but we should address that. Otherwise, I think uh, we cannot speak about growth of four or five percent, which are completely out of the reality now, I would say. And at the same time, we should go ahead with the, the, the reforms in the fiscal administration, with reforms in the healthcare sector, which are still lagging behind. And if we do that, I think the potential of the economy can grow. The potential is estimated now close to two, three percent, maybe, but much lower compared with the pre-crisis level. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, <clears throat> I have a couple of immediate questions for you before I turn to uh, Katalin. Uh, Jonat, you mentioned uh, the decline of gross fixed investments, which now has been two years uh, falling, including private sector, including public. And the, my first question is, how do you see that actually developing in the coming years? And what will be the drivers of any potential growth here? Um, you, you said it has to bounce, but sometimes it's good to explain uh, what is behind that uh, statement. Second question is the outlook for lending. So, the first question, yeah, investment activity. Actually, at the beginning of 2014, there was a kind of pickup in investment activity in the private sector. Unfortunately, afterwards, we had uh, the special construction tax and that tax was quite negative for the investment activity to have 1.5% tax on fixed investments for a country with such a huge need for investments, I think is completely outrageous. So unfortunately, the government is considering to revisit that tax. They decided to cut that tax to 1%. There is a discussion now to cut completely that tax, which should be positive for the investment activity. At the same time, in the public sector, I think eventually the, the EU funds absor absorption should, uh, should pick up 
and this should be reflected in the investment activity as well. And last year, the investment activity in the public tax sector was so low compared with the historical uh, levels, and I think we should have a pickup in that sector as well. So the sentiment probably will improve a little bit, especially if the, the government will consider a fiscal easing as they are discussing now. There is some support from external markets, quantitative easing in Europe, plenty of liquidity. There will be some opportunities probably in Romania. So, The second question, lending activity, I think it's a more difficult one. 